Hey, hey, welcome to my channel. If you haven't been here before, I am Cassie. I am the soap maker here at 3H Farms, Texas Soap Company. Um, and today we are doing all natural soap. It is some of my most requested soaps, my best selling soaps. Uh, for one, people seek out goat smoke soap if you have eczema, psoriasis, um, skin conditions. It's just amazing. And um, a lot of people want essential oil, essential oil, oil, essential oil only in their soaps. Uh, the fragrance oils that we have in some of our soaps, like our blackberries, is a very good selling soap. Beach, please. Um, we buy those from, can I speak today, from an amazing company, uh, several actual amazing companies that have none of those nasty chemicals um, and uh, that cause, you know, skin problems or cancer or anything like that. So we have sourced and found um, some companies that have amazing fragrance oils. Uh, Nurture Soap is one of them. But today, we're using a oil only, and we're only using one. Um, I, I sat here, and I put a few drops of essential oil in a cup, and I'm smelling them. Um, that's kind of how I play around with essential oils. I have a, a diffuser. Um, I'll take this, like, few drops put it in a diffuser and I'll smell it and I'll, I'll just smell the house. And, um, sometimes it takes a little while, but I really like to, um, first of all, use essential oils to diffuse in the house for all kinds of reasons. Um, but I just want to make a basic soap for, not necessarily just the guys, but the guys really do love a woodsy smelling soap. I do have a soap called Take a Hike that we used. It's a essential oil and a fragrance oil blend. Um, and so today I'm going to be making just a cedar wood. And this is not just any cedar wood oil. It's Atlas cedar wood oil. I buy mine in these giant 2.2 pound containers. It's giant. Uh, not only do you get a lot more essential oil for your dollar, um, but if you're curious, you can always buy the small little 10 milliliter bottles. Um, and like I wanted to smell plant therapies, uh, balsam fur. Amazing. I'm going to be buying a big one of these. Um, going to be making just a balsam one. Um, I also got a little bit bigger, uh, essential oil, which is, this is the one fluid ounce. Um, and I even got the Himalayan cedar wood to put in my night, uh, face serum. I've been playing around with making some all natural, uh, face serums because I can't use chemicals. I have eczema on my face, sometimes even makeup. I don't know if you can see my eczema has cleared up through the years because I use goat smoke soap and I stay away from synthetic anything. Um, but the fragrance oils that we do use have never broke me out, which is amazing or my kids. So on to what I'm doing. I'm measuring everything out. I got some uh, water, distilled water. I heat it up in the microwave because today I, instead of using, I also am going to use oatmeal, uh, instead of using the sodium lactate, I'm going to use sea salt and I'll show you. So you want to use a teaspoon per pound. Today is a very high humid day, humidity day. Um, and so I'm going to literally, let me get my small scale. I got my lye already measured, ready to pour over my goat's milk. I'm about to do that, but I want to measure out my sea salt, 
which it's about a teaspoon per pound. Um, and I'm just going to show you, you could either weigh it out and I'll, I'll let you know what it is in grams, exactly what it weighs out, but I just get my little, where's my little teaspooner? Can you see this okay? No, not really. Um, let's try to scoop some stuff out of the way for you. I got my, this is oatmeal already blended up. You're, um, a, I'm able to see, I got the comments and stuff close enough so I could read them. So I'm looking over here at my computer and trying to make sure. So let's zero this out. We have one, two, oh, two and a quarter, three and a quarter, two, uh, a little over. Sorry. There we go. Kind of count to myself now so I don't mess up. Almost out of sea salt. Okay. That comes to 65 grams of salt. And I have the water warmed up so it will dissolve my salt in there. Now, you could buy sodium lactate. Um, you could use a different type of salt. You could use just regular iodized salt. This is sea salt. I don't know, that's not a brand that I'm promoting or nothing, just a kind that I'm using. Um, and I'm just going to let this dissolve, regular spoon is fine, into the warm water. So I discounted the amount of water that I'm using to dissolve my salt out of my goat's milk that I have over here in the sink ready to go. I'm going to get all gloved up, have my hair tie, I'm going to just put my hair back for a second, put my goggles on, just want to be super careful, working with lye, if you've ever worked with lye, please take the time to uh, you know, watch all the videos. I have videos. Everybody has videos on working with lye. Um, you know, you can look at royalty soaps as one of my go-tos. Uh, Brambleberry has a channel. There's all kinds of channels that do handling lye. And um, I'm using a cold process method where I'm using frozen goat's milk. So there's not going to be a lot of fuming. But just as a precautionary Throw it on my mask. There we go. Good to go. And then a long handled spoon and gloves. So I have my, I'll show you. I have my goat's milk right here in uh, my big container. Have a message just now. One second. Just want to double check. Okay. I'll have to check the bank. That's an alert. I'm gonna pour about half of my line. Get it going. It'll start melting super fast. I mean, it, it, it as soon as it contacts liquid, it already starts melting. And I'm just trying to scrape it off and move it around as safely as I possibly can.
Warm it up. Got to keep it moving. I'm just, I don't know how well you can see me over here. I'm just stirring this, trying not to splash any on this. This is the most dangerous part, is working with the lye. And you're just keeping it flowing, keeping it moving. So we can melt the frozen goat's milk and it's not going to scorch any of it. If you don't move it around, you don't get it mixed good. Get it to scorch your milk, and you don't want to do that. Some people mix the lye with water and then add just a small amount of milk. This is, uh, I got 10% water, 90% goat's milk. So in order to have, um, it's usually more, I usually have 100% goat's milk, but today, because I wanted to use salt and show you that you don't have to buy the sodium lactate. Um, you can use salt. Now my phone's going off. It's in my ear. Anyways, you don't have to buy the sodium lactate. You can use um, salt and you can dissolve it in. It's better to dissolve it in water, in warm water, uh, then putting it in here, because this tastes pretty cool because it's frozen, and your chances that your salt isn't going to completely dissolve, you know, that, that wouldn't be very good. I can't see anything. I am like a foggy mess right now. All my goat's milk is almost mixed and melted, and then we can start getting our oils laid up. Okay, I'm gonna take my gloves off before I touch my face mask or anything like that. There's no there's no lye on them, but just to be careful, it's good to give it a little rinse. Look how foggy I am. I can't even see anything right now. Whoo! Holy. Whoo! It is humid here in Texas, so... This salt is almost dissolved. Just gonna make sure it's nice and dissolved before I put it in to my lye and goat smoke mixture. Now we're gonna get this oils weighed up. I gotta tar zero out my scale. Okay. Now we have, I don't know, I feel like I have a little tingle on my finger, so let's give it a good rinse, just in case I got some on there. I got all my crock pot for making liquid soap. I got all my soap making supplies under here. I need castor oil. I'm going to need 
olive oil, which is down here. Ugh. Here's my olive oil. And I need coconut oil. Today we're not using canola. We're going to be using, um, we're going to be using lard today. And I need to order some more coconut oil. Okay, I have my recipe right here in front of me. Oh, this is not going to be hard enough. It's hard as a rock because it got cool. So, I need to get... I got to get a hard... I got a nice metal spoon. I'm gonna just measure this out really quickly. Hmm. Here we go. Make sure that's good. I don't know if you can see my scale. Let me move my scale over here for you. There we go. I get a zero it back out. Close. Oh, I went over just an ounce. Now I'm going to use the same spoon, but I'm going to wipe it off to get my lard because both those oils are going to have to be popped in the microwave real quick just to melt them. So now I'm going to zero this out, and we're going to measure up our lard. Lard is one of the closest things, oils I should say, to our own natural skin and fats. So comparably, these oils are the closest thing to us, and amazing benefits to your skin for years and years and years um tons of soap was made with either lard or tallow almost there oops 
Perfect. Now I'm going to pop this in the microwave real quick. My hair is falling. out of the way. And I lied a minute ago. I forgot this recipe does have a little canola oil and then castor oil and olive oil. So it is a good blend of all the, the just wonderful moisturizing oils. Uh, let's see. Let's do olive oil. Thank you, thank you for the thumbs up. Appreciate it. Didn't even know anyone was watching. It doesn't say anyone is watching, so I don't know. This is weird. And then we're going to double check. Just over here so I could see it. There we go. It's all the olive oil we need. Castor oil. Now you don't put too much in because too much is going to give your soap a weird slimy feeling. This is just enough to add some nice bubbles to your soap. Not only does the castor oil do the bubbles, make it more bubbly, lathers really well, so does the lard and so does the goat's milk. So this is one of my favorite recipes for winter time. Okay, and then, so I know how to use it. I gotta put it up. Let me, my oils are just almost melted. And then I kept out my lye to show you. Essential Depot is where I get my lye. If you've never watched my videos, they have the most amazing uh, products for soap making, and I'm not sponsored by them. While my oils are heating up, I'm going to grab a container and I'm gonna weigh out my um, essential oil. When you have essential oils in your recipe, you must punch in um, your recipe to, for one, for soap calculator, and then for two, for essential oils, it's essentialoil.eocalc.com, and it'll tell you the percentage of oils that is safe to use, because even if, even it's essential oil, it's natural, using it at a high percentage rate could harm someone. Um, so you just want to always make sure you're punching in your totals and you want to use, uh, so for cedar wood oil at a 4% rate, which is um, just kind of usually where we go, we go the strongest amount and the, the one underneath that we kind of hit in between. So at 5%, it's 9.6. At 4%, it's 7.68. So we kind of go a little closer to the 5% um, just to make sure because essential oils do lose their scent over time. Um, we try to anchor them with kale and clay or some type of oatmeal or something like that. But uh, after a while, essential oils just start to fade. It's just one thing 
um, that they do. Okay, I gotta make sure I'm watching how much I'm adding here. Getting close. The color of this is already beautiful. Smells very woodsy, um, a little spice to it. Um, I just, I think this is going to be a real popular soap. Just stirring my oils, making sure they're all dissolved. And they are. All of them are nicely, nice and dissolved. Do you see I just dropped my there? Glad that it's wood as it's floating. Okay, now I could zero this out and I can add my olive oil. And now I'll add my canola oil in. olive oil, castor oil, and then canola oil. Zero it, canola oil time. I'm watching my scale over here, making sure I don't go over. Getting close. Double check. Yep. Almost there. Give it a little time to register. Oh, I'm like an ounce away. So close. Still not there? Oh my goodness. There, that's perfect. This is where you want to get your thermometer and you want to make sure your oils aren't too hot. Let's give it a stir because I just put a bunch of cold oil in there. You want to keep this around 90. You don't want to go over 90 doing a cold process soap. This is perfectly at 93 degrees. Can you see that? Are you serious? All the way in Ireland? Well, this is fake red hair, but I do have some Irish heritage. So I wish I had real red hair, but, uh, you know, I love my Irish roots. What can I say? I just made, um, well, I don't know, Celtic, Irish. A lot of people claim it the English, but I just made a soap, and I'm calling it Green Sleeves. And it's... Uh, I, I just love that song, and um, it's, to me, you know, a great song, but for all year round, but for especially for Christmas time. So um, I actually was supposed to do the cut live on YouTube, but our internet was out. But I have the soap over here to show you guys how it come out, and I'm going to do like a small short video and I'm going to have the music green sleeves playing. So I'll show it to you really quickly. It come out so nice. It's so beautiful. Isn't it beautiful? It's got gold. And then the fragrance oils uh, turn the soap green. Um, and then I just added a little bit of mica to... Uh, anchor the color and so it wouldn't spot and discolor. Okay, so uh, I will point you down. I hope I don't lose connection pointing you down because I really want you to see this part. I'm going to be super, super, super careful. Okay, there we go. Now you can see this part. So I have all my oils. 12 pounds of soap is what we're making. Thank you, thank you. Uh, so we have all of our soap measured out. Let me get my scale out of the way because I'm done with that. 
I got everything measured out. I don't know who's calling me. It says spam. I'm not answering something that says spam. Uh, this is the uh, Cedarwood, Atlas Cedarwood fragrance oil that we're using today. Um, and then I saved my container that has a little bit of oil left in it. I'm going to grab my measure. I'm going to measure out. Um, so Cedarwood is kind of, um, I want it to be a yellow color. I had like a little something there in my bowl. I don't know what it was. So to keep with the natural theme, I moved it. I have ground turmeric. Oh, can you see that? Stop glaring. Okay, ground turmeric powder. Um, and that's what we're going to mix to give this a beautiful yellow color. So where I made the green sleeves soap, I don't want to make a green and gold soap natural. I'll get them confused in my curing racks. So what I'm going to do for cedar is I'm going to give it a nice yellow tint. And turmeric is very, very good for your skin. So I want this to be for all my people that only want essential oil, natural colorants. This is for you. This is for my customers who beg me not to have any colorants and only essential oils only. So um, we're just going to use a couple of tablespoons. I actually have just enough in here. You see that? I'm just going to use the rest. I don't want this to be bright, bright yellow, but I just want to give it a nice wood looking color. But I also want the benefits of the turmeric. So I have about mm, maybe two heaping tablespoons in there that was left. Isn't that beautiful? So it's like mustard looking now. And is, do you say your name, Kat, Katarina? We have a niece that is Katarina, but it's spelled differently. It's spelled with a K, and it's the German spelling of Katarina. Um, so I just was wondering, that's how you say your name. Um, and since we have the colorant in here, I'm going to add about half of the essential oil That'll anchor some of that. It'll soak into the turmeric powder. And it'll also just help me lift up the turmeric powder and get it all mixed in for when I'm ready to color my soap. Okay, I'm going to just pop this over here. Um, here is that salt water. The, the salt is all incorporated into the distilled water. We warm the water, we put the salt in. So instead of sodium lactate, we're using just regular sea salt. You could use any kind of salt, Himalayan, ionized, whatever you want. I'm gonna bring it over here so you can see. This is my goat's milk. What a lovely name. I thought it was, sometimes I'm, I'm really wrong with names. So this is going to make adding sea salt or adding salt or sodium lactate helps your bar harden a little faster than if you were not to add anything to it. And that's just something that us soap makers really need because I only have so many molds and I need to make another batch and I can't just have my soap setting for days in a mold. Having a goat's milk soap makes a softer bar anyways. And so I need the soap to harden a little faster. And also for time, um, the soap sets up a lot faster so I can get it out to my customers. Um, so it has that and minerals are also amazing for your skin. So there's all of that. Can you see? Okay, so this is kind of my trick to pouring. Your goat's milk is going to splash. A lot of people put their blender inside there and try to pour against the blender. I just take 
my container and I kind of just let it hit my spoon ever so gently because this is lye and goat's milk. It's still active lye. Your lye is active for up to 24 hours. So once this spawnifies, and then look, I slow down because there's little bits in here that are hard. I don't want these little bits. It's okay. They hardened up. It's because I didn't get it them dissolved Ooh, really well. Make sure I'm not dripping. Can you? See? It's hard for me to show you the little bits. Maybe if I hold it like that. Anyways, there's little bits of lye. Ooh, see them at the very, very bottom of the container. We're just going to leave those out. It's not going to hurt the recipe at all. Now let me grab my spoon. Scrape it with my spatula. Okay, now this is the fun part. We get to blend it up. I'm gonna try to scoot it back so you can see the goat's milk at the bottom blending with the oils. And we are not putting in any essential oils until we get this emulsified to a thin trace. So here we go. Uh, a good tip too, burp your blender, just kind of tilt it. Make sure there's no air in there. a little bit of pop of green because it is um, a tree and most cedar, well, all cedars are evergreens. So I do want to do a little pop of green. So I'm going to, let's see. Um, well, let's do this. I got the cedar wood oil here. The rest of the cedar wood oil. And to keep with being all natural, oh, where'd I put it? Oh, I'm a mess today. I have Sprunula, hope I'm saying that correctly. I'm so country, Sprunula powder. Everybody says things differently. That's how I say it, okay? Sprunula. Oh, I'm gonna have to cut it. Anyways, um, not only is this amazing for you to drink and put in your smoothies, it is a beautiful green colorant. And if I could open this up, if I would have had this ready to go before I started blending, that would have been ideal. So I got distracted. And now I can't open it because I have gloves on. Do you see me struggling over here? I don't want to take my gloves off. 
I don't have to. Aha! I got it. Got it. Okay. Sprunula powder is a beautiful dark green. So I am not going to need a whole, whole lot. It is, look how just dark green that is. Look at this. We're going to just mix it up. Let me scrape out that with this tiny spatula. And we're just going to pop this on the very top of the bar as like just a little decoration. That's why I don't have a whole lot in here either. It's just, just enough. It would make a really nice swirl in the soap as well. So if you wanted to mix it up and swirl the soap, that would be nice. But look how green that is. It's so beautiful. And you just barely need it. That was a tablespoon. Okay, now I'm going to take my blender off. This is a very, very thin, and I mean thin batter right here. So I'm going to separate it now. None of the oil, I mean, it looks like all the oil. I'm going to double check. Sometimes. I give it a stir. If you see any oil separating, then you want to blend it for like another minute. Let's try just blending it for one more minute. And uh, I will then pour, separate it. Sometimes it can be tricky. You think you're out of trace. And then if you don't have it at the, the emulsified, the, at least the first trace, you could run the risk of it separating. And you want it to resemble there. That's better. That now, when you pop in your blender, can you see it's it's like it's a very thin gravy. That's just the best thing I can do for you is give you a food reference. It's a very thin gravy, like, and it, it leaves you can. Very easily see a circle pattern left at the very top. Okay, so we're going to pour off the screen. And if I could just describe the scent for you, it is just the perfect amount of woodsy, very light on the spice, but it just smells fresh and clean like you're just around a bunch of cedar trees. Have you ever cut down a, a cedar tree before? Very similar to that. So I'm just going to pour a little bit in here to get this mixed at the bottom. To get it pulled up off the bottom. It won't be that orangey yellow after we get it mixed in all of this. So I just want to make sure I get all the turmeric powder scraped off the bottom and then pouring in here. Now, I tried making a cedar wreath one year, and I found out that the evergreen part of the cedar broke me out. But the cedar oil, I used straight on my, well, I diluted it with a carrier oil, and it did not break me out. So, no telling. It probably has something to do with the green part of the cedar wood. Let me close up this powder before I have a huge accident. That would be cool. Okay, I'm going to blend that up last because it's dark and green and I don't want that in the soap. And I'm just going to blend it for a few, like maybe a minute. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
That's perfect. I'm just going to unhook my blender and set it back in that container over here that I had my color in tin. And I'm going to grab my molds real quick. We need six two pound molds. So let me. Oh, you almost would have forgot. Talking made me forget. I have to add the oatmeal. I'm using oatmeal as the scrubber portion of my soap because my husband loves using the bar instead of a wash rag. I know it would last longer if he used a wash rag, but it's what he likes and I'm not going to stop him. So this way, this gives him a nice scrubby feel in the soap and it's good for your skin. I just blended some oats in my little KitchenAid, little blender. It was perfect. Uh, it gives a nice powder and then you can leave it a little coarse. Let me just break up any of those big bits. I don't want to take too much time because it's already getting thick. Too thick and it'll be difficult to pour. So one, two, four, six. We got six. Try to put a seventh one in there. Okay. And then now we're going to blend this up. I might have to pop in my blender. It's pretty full, so I'm worried of putting my blender in there and it going over the top. I think I'm just going to blend it for a second. we go. Get to pouring before it gets too thick on you. Very beautiful color. I love the way the color come out. It's nice and thick, so the green should not sink down too far, which is what we're wanting. Grab my spatula, scrape the container really, really well. Don't leave any soap. For one, it makes it tough to clean up. For two, you don't want to waste any of this. This is your money. This is all your hard work in there. Look how much soap is left in there. You do not want to waste that. That's just so beautiful. You just need some, you need some. When I get done getting it all scraped out, we'll just tap it down just a little. 
And then if I have too much in another one, we'll rob Peter to pay Paul. Oh, we still have a little bit in there. Can't leave it in there. This is the most tedious part. This is where, you know, I would edit edit it out for you. Sorry about that. But this is live, so you get to see the whole thing. Pop doing that pops any air bubbles that may have happened during the pour. You don't want air bubbles in there. Smooth it out. Then you can see, you can set them side by side and see who needs what. So this guy, he needs some. This one's good. This one's good. This one's got a little more. So we'll just pop it over. Oh, I was like, what is that? It's oatmeal. I was like, why is there a speck in there? It's the oatmeal. Thank you, thank you. Almost done. Bear with me. Just want to try to make sure that everybody looks like they have the same amount. It's okay if it's not exact. Give this a since he's been setting. And now, because it's it's so thick. I could just nicely have a green top layer. And I'm doing that to break the fall so it doesn't dip down in there. Or you could did a little do a little hanger swirl. That would be really pretty to get it go to go down in there. It's real pretty when you have a line of green and a line, you know, the two colors separated or swirled. I, I, I like both. I really was, it took me forever earlier because I was playing around blending different essential oils with the cedar wood, looking at other people's blends and thinking, oh, theirs are nice and stuff. So I just kept smelling it on its own and I just thought it was beautiful on its own. Look, I'm gonna have to rob, rob from one to the other. Um, so I just went ahead and did plain cedar wood, or it's not just cedar wood, it's Atlas cedar wood. Uh, because just on its own, I think it stands out. It is a lot of hunters this time of year want a soap that smells like the forest. So I didn't want to add any florals like lavender to it. I didn't want to do anything that would stand out too much. Um, I just wanted them to have a nice clean soap that smelled like the woods and that way they can sneak up on their little deers, their little animals, if they wanted to. So I'm gonna take, I'm gonna get a better spoon because that that spoon won't be easy to get this. So the one I have filled too much. Like I said, we're gonna rob Peter, pay Paul. So 
See where I got a little too crazy? I was tacking. Okay, now I need to get this one. Little bitsy more. I got a lot in that one. And I just love the Sprunula powder because I see the little flecks of green. So it th it makes me like it looks like woodsy. It looks like the tree. It looks like the evergreen part of the tree. So if you're looking for a natural colorant, I would highly recommend Sprunula powder. Where did that fly? That fly come out of nowhere. You see that? I'm glad it's not setting up quickly. If it was already setting up, I'd be in trouble. So we're doing good. Robin, this guy for that guy. I keep saying guy. I'm surrounded by men. So no, nothing offensive to any of the gals. I'm just used to saying guys. I have brothers. I have boy cousins. You know. It's just the territory. It's just my life. I call gals guys. Hey, you guys. Anyone ever watch Goonies? It's one of my faves. So like I said, I could swirl this if I wanted to. I think I'm just going to leave the top the way it is and see how it comes out. Just clean up my edges. Get it all in the mold. You don't want to leave any on the sides. That's just going to waste your soap. You just want to nicely get a nice little spatula and just scrape around the edges. Nothing crazy. I don't know about you. You make soap. You know you know what I'm talking about. When you make a batch of soap, is it not one of the most satisfying things? I feel so accomplished for the day. I mean, I've already done, I've been up since 5 a.m. running my butt off on the farm and doing a lot of stuff in the house. But it just, I feel so accomplished when I can make a batch of soap. I mean, it's just, I just am so proud that I get that in my day and get to do it. It has replaced baking in my life, though. I don't do much baking anymore, which I don't need it. <laughs> Jokingly, I just, I got to stay away from the sugars. Um, and here, I'm just going to throw a little texture on top. Nothing crazy. Just kind of back and forth, kind of like the tree. I don't know how well that's coming out on the camera. Oh, I'm trying to resist the urge of getting a hanger and pushing some of that green down but I, I just I don't know if I want to mess it up <laughs> it probably wouldn't mess it up I think I think we're just gonna leave it we're gonna we're gonna keep it like it is I like in the 
the wave, the little crisp back and forth lines. That's cute. Okay, well, we're all done. I'm gonna spritz this with alcohol um, and put some cellophane on top. Thank you so much for watching. I'm gonna just rinse off my gloves really quickly so I can grab my alcohol. If you guys enjoyed the video, do me a favor, uh, like, subscribe, comment. We're on the Facebook, TikTok, Instagram as well. Um, I am behind on getting content out, so apologies. It's just been crazy busy around here. Um, so if you would please let me know if you like these live videos, I'll keep doing them. And if not, I'll go back to um, editing. It just, editing takes so much time. It really does. And I just, I like to at least have some time with my family. So can I get back far enough? No, I don't want to mess this up. Okay. Thank you so much for coming all the way from Ireland to watch. Holy moly. Um, I bet it's just absolutely gorgeous. I've always wanted to go there. Um, I would love to visit there one day. So hopefully that can happen. Have a beautiful day. Thank you so much for commenting and taking the time to be here with me and have an absolute beautiful day. Oh, yay. Thank you so much. If you're on Instagram, when you add me, let me know that you're from YouTube um, if your name is different so I can add you to my Instagram as well. I would love to follow um, anyone who follows me. And if um, you know, you do anything similar, uh, let me see what you do. So if you want to make a cedar soap and you use some of my ideas, um, tag me. I would love that. Um, I know that I try not to copy any soap makers, but I do draw inspiration from, um, a lot of the wonderful, talented people on here. So I hope that I could inspire you and make soap making less stressful. And um, I hope that you guys have a beautiful day. Thank you so much again for coming by and watching my channel and um, have a fabulous fall if I'm not back by winter. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> winter soaps are coming. So I hope to be diving in and making some wonderful holiday soaps for you guys. And I'll try to get that green sleeves cut soap out ASAP. Bye. Bye, Katerina.